Hi, my name is Peter Schultz. I'm the developer of WordPress plugin WP Data Access. I'm recording this June 2022. In this video I will demonstrate the simplest way ever to publish a CSV file in WordPress. I presume you have already installed the plugin and enabled the premium data service on your WordPress server. Let's get started. Start the Data Explorer and select your premium data server. Please notice the connect icon in the toolbar. This icon is only available in your Data Explorer for premium data service. Open the connection type drop down list and select your connection type, which is CSV file in my case. To give our data server access to your data file, your CSV file needs to be accessible from a public URL. It does not matter how you provide access to this URL, as long as the link returns the content of your data file only. I will use a link I have already prepared with Dropbox for this demo. I'll explain later how you can make your CSV file available from a public link using Dropbox as well. If your CSV file does not contain sensitive information, you can keep your file online and, de and define an automatic update interval. Please make sure the public URL is read-only. With an interval of 7 days, the premium data server will check every week if there are any updates. To access my CSV file in WordPress, I need to give it a name. When we now click the Create button, the CSV file is uploaded to the data server and the database table is created. I can now access the CSV file as if it were a database table from all WP Data Access tools. Let me quickly demonstrate how easy it is to publish the CSV table on my WordPress website. I created a publication added the search pane, the search builder, export buttons and some styling. Then I copied the shortcode to my web page. It took me just a few minutes to upload my CSV file and create a professional responsive table supporting multiple filters, sorting, printing and multiple export formats. I used my Dropbox to provide a public link to my CSV file. This allows me to use my favorite spreadsheet program to maintain the file. Let's add some info and save the file. Please notice the timestamp. Back in the Data Explorer, I want my database table to sync with the changes I just made to my CSV file. I don't want to wait, I want the changes to be effective immediately. So, to perform this action, click the Manage link, and you'll see that the Refresh button is available. This Refresh button appears for all tables that are based on remote data files. I can see the update schedule and I can also change that schedule. I can also initiate a refresh right away by clicking the refresh button. Even if you do not define a refresh interval, you can refresh your table at any time. Keep in mind, however, that this works only if you provided a public URL link during table creation, which remains valid.
You can basically use any tool to provide a public link to your data file, as long as your link provides the file content only. I used Dropbox in this demo, which I found the easiest way to provide a public link. Let me demonstrate how this works. Here is my Dropbox folder. The folder contains a number of files. To create a public link for one of the files, right-click the link. Select the Share option for Dropbox. Create a link. And then copy the link. So, let's view this link in the browser. And you will see that this link adds a kind of viewer. Now, this is not going to work in WP Data Access. To make it work, you have to change the parameter DL is 0 uh, to DL equals 1. So if I perform this request, then you can see that the file is downloaded. And this works with WP Data Access. You can, of course, use any other tool as long as you make sure that the URL you enter returns the file content only. The result of each update is logged on our data server. You can access your messages directly from the Data Explorer. Here are my messages so far. I have created a table and updated it without errors. Whenever you have new messages, the icon is either green when there are no errors or red if there are errors. If you have no messages or all are marked as red, the icon will have its normal color. You can also register your email address with your account if you, to pre if you prefer to get your messages via email. This is done through Settings, PDS, select your data service, and then enter your email address and update your account. When a CSV file is updated, the synchronization process might run into an error. The question is not if that will ever happen, the question is when. It is important to know how to handle errors. Errors are communicated just like messages through the Data Explorer or via email like I just showed you. Let's force an error to see this in action and the column length for each table column is determined from the CSV file. So here are my columns. Um, the name column, for example, is defined as character 6. If we store a value longer than 6 characters in our CSV file, the update will fail. Now, let's change our CSV file to make the update fail. Now, right here, I'm back in my spreadsheet. And what I will do, I will just add a few characters after this name over here, and then store the value. Now I will go back to my table. And then refresh the table again. And now you can see that the message icon is red. And when I click on it, I can see what's going wrong. So it tells me that field number 2 is too long for name on line 15. Well, line 15, that's not completely correct. If we look at our CSV file, you can see that this is actually line 16. But a CSV file usually has a header. And my in my case, this CSV file does have one, so you have to subtract the header line from the row numbers. Now the question is, how do we solve this issue? There are two ways to solve this issue. We can drop the table and recreate it. We can also change the column data type. Changing the data type is probably the most preferable solution. 
Well, didn't I say that all plugin tools are available for this table? So when we click the alter table button from the data explorer, our table is loaded into the data designer. And here I can change my table. So in this case, for example, I want to change the length of the name and I could change that to 10 because I actually changed it to 10. But I can also um, change it to a value that's more appropriate for uh, future updates. So I'll do that, then I'll save the table design. And now I just need to alter the table. So this one alters the table, which means that if we go back now to our table, we can see that the, the length of the name column is now 100. So let's refresh it again. Now the update works as expected. The error is still there because I didn't delete it uh, and I didn't mark it as red as well. So my table is up to date now. Okay, that was it. I uh, hope this helps you to get started. Please check the online documentation for more in-depth information and use the forum if you need help. Thank you for watching.